board. This time I mean it. Alternating layers of soil and sand and soil and sand. This is to help to promote good drainage because as arid species, they do not like to get their feet wet. Our newest exhibit, the Lynn Lockheed Spiny Forest of Madagascar. Fairchild Tropical Garden is named in honor of Dr. David Fairchild. Dr. Fairchild was a plant scientist who worked for the USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, and he would go all around the world in his custom-built Chinese junk, the Chiang Ho, come back with plants he thought might have ornamental or commercial value. Now, some of the plants he brought back were, for example, the cauliflower. Well, that was okay. He also came back with winter wheat. That was kind of important. Most important of all, he brought back the soya bean. Yes, Dr. David Fairchild is the man who fed the world. In his heyday, the early 1930s, he was one of the most preeminent scientists in the world. He was as famous back then as John Glenn is famous today. Everybody had heard of him, so the founders of the garden asked permission to name the garden in his honor. Obviously, he agreed, and voila, Fairchild Tropical Cannonball Tree. You can see a structure there that is very unique. It's neither a root nor a branch. Those are called runners. They're along the runners, the very beautiful and fragrant flowers are now in bloom. Well, once pollinated, those flowers will set out a fruit that will grow to be very large. And they will grow to be very round. And they will grow to be very black. Are native to Cuba. Also native to Cuba, here's the end of the plot on the left. This palm tree that has retained all that dead raw material there along the trunk. This is the famous, the famous petticoat palm. Now, if you look closely at that frond of the petticoat palm, as it grows on down the trunk, you could see that that frond is really one continuous frond, growing down the trunk in a spiral-like manner, like an old-fashioned barbershop bowl. But as, the, as we come around the corner now, you see here on the right side another one of our newer exhibits. This is the Whitman Tropical Fruit Pavilion. Now, Fairchild Tropical Garden is old. They will grow a trunk. The American oil palm is a source of a very fine oil used in manufacturing and in cosmetics. Many years ago, some clever folks took that oil, mixed it up with some olive oil to produce a product I'm sure most of you are familiar with, the palm. Oh, so, here comes the botany lesson. Pay attention, there's a quiz. Now, there are two sorts of palm trees. If you look over on the right side now, in the center of the plot, you can see this nice, low, green tree growing here. This represents the first sort of palm tree. This, by the way, is a sable palm, which is the state tree of Florida. Now, look at its leaves, which are correctly called fronds. You can see they're sort of rounded, and the leaflets radiate from the circumference. Two large palm trees you see here on the left side as we come around the corner now. These are native to East Africa. These are Barassus palms. Now, the Barassus palm is the tallest palm tree in the world. They grow to be over 140 feet tall. Barassus palm from East Africa. Now, most of the plants here at Fairchild Tropical Garden are exotics. All that simply means is they're not from around here. They've been gathered from all over the world, brought here to be cultivated. Hello, Marjorie. Having said that, this large tree is going to be on your left side now as we come around the corner that I want to talk to you about. is a native of Florida and the Caribbean. This is a gumbo limbo tree. Gumbo limbo. I love that name. Some people insist in calling this a West Indian cedar. Well, forget it. It has nothing to do with that plant. But the other nickname for the gumbo limbo, one that I like the best, is the tourist tree. And we call it the tourist tree because the bark is always red and healing. Oh my, 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 my. We're now driving through the Montgomery Palmetum. A palmetum is a collection of palm trees, and we grow the world's greatest palm collection. A combination of number of species, quality of cultivation, our research and our conservation work. We have the largest group of palm researchers and students in the United States. We maintain the world's only Palm and SciCAD DNA Bank. CSI Miami for Plants.
that is native to South Florida, and this is a live oak tree. Now, we call it a live oak, not in contrast to a dead oak. It is called a live oak because it is an evergreen. It always keeps its leaves. The leaves are always green, so it's always live. Beautiful South Florida native plant, the live oak tree. As you might have heard, the rainforest is an extremely endangered ecosystem. At one time, the rainforest covered about 14% of the Earth's surface. Well, today that's down to about 6%, with a loss of one acre per hour. Now, this is unfortunate because we have come to learn that about 50, that's right, 50% of modern medications have been derived from rainforest subspecies. Also, the rainforest produces another byproduct most living things find of interest, and that is called oxygen. That's right, trees make oxygen, so we urge you to support a group working to preserve the rainforest. Go hug a tree. The life you save may be your own. Oh, Fairchild has one of the most extensive. We've now come to the most formal part of the garden. And on the left, we have the Bailey Palm Glade, a very formal overlook, named in honor of, thank you, named in honor of Liberty Hyde Bailey, a famous botanist of the period. Two large palm trees you see on either side of the railing on the left are North African Phoenix date palms. Now, in their native habitat in North Africa, each of these trees would bear about 400 pounds of fruit per year. Well, here in Miami, the fruit does not mature. It's too hot for them here, and uh, it's too wet for them here, and uh, I don't think they like the, the weather here. We're now in more. Now, the pandanus tree is a native of the Philippines and Pacific Malaysia. They like to grow near the water, but they do not like to get their feet wet, hence the elaborate stilt root system. Now, the female...